and standby hitting on stream on Facebook. A few more seconds. All right, John, you may proceed. Well, everybody, welcome to Friday. Uh, today in the studio, we have John Min. John, I have John Min from uh, Netherlands, Holland. So we looked at uh, his colors yesterday, and he was kind enough to give some information as we we're looking at the colors. Um, so it'll be, we'll see some uh, pictures of his work first, and then we'll go to the demonstration. If you're on Zoom, you can ask questions uh, directly. And if you're on Facebook, um, I and um, Ethel, Giovanni, uh, Johnny, Angela will all be reading your messages. Um, Angela will be doing, Angela, are you doing um, Spanish conversion today? Uh, I'm just looking if there are uh, any guests that did translation. Okay. If there are, I will, with a lot of pleasure. Hello, Patsy. Hello, Judy. So with that, we're going to go ahead and we're going to um, start. So, John yeah. Min, welcome. Thank you so much, John. Um, first of all, uh, thank you for the invitation. It's a very wonderful invitation. And um, I, I want to uh, tell you that I appreciate very much what you are all doing for people who love watercolor. I, I like people who do things with passion, with their soul, and you're a man that's really doing a lot of things with his soul. So I think it's good to tell this and you inspire a lot of people with your amazing knowledge. Uh, thank you for, for, for this. Uh, first of all, I could maybe start our presentation, okay. Ethel. Yeah, let's do I want to tell you in, in a short time, I want to tell you something about my social media. I'm on Instagram at janmin240. The next one. This is my Facebook site with uh, one of my most dearest paintings. I'll tell you this uh, on a later time. Yes, the next one. Of course, I do have a website, www.watercolorsjanmin.com. The next one. And of course, I do have a YouTube channel. You can find there uh, quite a lot of demos who I made uh, in the past. And maybe later on, I will publish this on YouTube as well. Um, the next slide, please. Yeah, I was talking about you, but I want to show you a few of my works and explain a little bit why I'm making these works. Well, I'm painting from my childhood uh, on, and uh, 20 years ago, I did meet uh, Alvaro and he changed completely my oil color life. And uh, it was the start uh, of uh, a career in the watercolors. I was really amazed what you can all do with watercolor. I'm a lucky man that, and um, I traveled a lot. This piece, this wonderful piece, I did meet in the north of Norway in Tromsø. It's, uh, it's above the Arctic Circle. And uh, I was really amazed about the silence. Where can you meet the silence in this world? So I took my camera and uh, later in my studio, I wished I was there again. So a lot of my works are based on being there in a travel or things that I've experienced myself. The next slide, please. Yes, even um, when in Holland, um, I love to go to the uh, Isles, Vlieland, Ameland, and um, well, I have a connection with water. I'm not only uh, passionate with watercolor, but all what is going on with water, I love in my heart since my childhood. So when we leave uh, the harbor, I saw a beautiful tug boat and the salvation boat. And later on, I decided to make this watercolor of it. I changed it completely, only working with two colors. So I love to transfer the emotion I experienced myself and share with the public. Next slide, please. 
This here is the, the same, a beautiful uh, sundown. Um, my target mostly is uh, to catch the light. And uh, I always attracted by the light. Um, uh, of course, the, the main focus is on the, the, the red uh, fishing boat. I used a lot of uh, uh, colors in it, even lavender uh, uh, and yellow ochres, the queen equidronus, the permanent orange. So some, sometimes I want to make a big party of colors. The next slide, please. Yes. <clears throat> I have a special feeling with the Queen Aquidrone deep gold. John talked about it uh, yesterday. And from time to time, I love to work with only two colors. This is a combination of Queen Aquidrone and deep gold and uh, Alvaro's Caliente Grey. It's all in my, uh, my dot card. And working with two colors is, uh, is, is it, 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 it's fine. I love working with tonal values and often discuss this later. I, uh, I prepare my works with, uh, with only tonal sketch. Blue is my favorite color as well with uh, Queen Aquidrone Deep Gold and Queen Aquidrone Shenna. It's the point of interest, this, this, this boat. Yes, the next please. Yes, walking on the beach um, with a dramatic sky. Yes, it's hard to resist this. And um, as a student, I often did visit the Maritime uh, Museum. And I was inspired by the old Dutch masters who didn't cease to put their emotions in the wild dramatic seas, but you can learn a lot of them. So often when I visit the museum and I, when I'm walking on the beach and I think, oh, wow, how would they make this? So it's only to, give the feeling, the emotion of, uh, of a walk on, on the beach. Yes, the next please. Yes, loneliness. I love uh, telling a story with, um, uh, with my works. And once again, I always like make color in it. The dark is dark and the light is light. Even uh, the masters as Rembrandt, Caravaggio, they always work with dark tonal values and light is light. So that's always my goal to get this on the paper. And uh, first of all, I, I must have kind of love feelings with my subjects when I'm saying, wow, this is great. You, I'm going to make um, a beautiful light in it. And that's part of the fun. It, uh, it starts with this. Ah. This is uh, coming to uh, my subject of this evening. Um, as I said before, I often make th this. This made this I made uh, yes yesterday. Yeah, this is only made with Alvaro's Caliente Grey, and mm. it's a pre-study actually to. Uh, to put my uh, darkest darks, to put my story, I, I always like to make a story. It's focused on the person who's staring there at the sea. Maybe there are two childs and there are some persons at the background. So you can make your own fantasy about it. What is he doing? Is he staring to the childs? You, you can make your own story. So this actually my starting point for tonight to make this in a, in, in a watercolor. Hi, Jan. Um, I, uh, the, the love you feel for your subject really is transmitted through your paintings. Uh, yeah. you, we can feel the love uh, from your subject. Can you tell us something about your love for boats? Oh, yes, yeah, sure. Well, actually, it's something uh, from my childhood. Uh, my, my, my father, uh, was a seaman for a couple of years and uh, later on uh, my biggest hobby was uh, sailing, swimming, diving, etc, etc and um, I've always had a special feeling with the water. I feel 
amazingly good. I uh, sailed a lot in the Mediterranean. Uh, it's, it's a real connection in my life. I traveled a lot. I worked 20 years for the Royal Navy, so it's in my DNA. <laughs> and um, when I retired, I decided to pick up my brushes again. Uh, it was always there, but I had more time. And uh, it was the start of, uh, of all this. Thank you so much. Fantastic. The one thing I, I did not mention is that John is a brand ambassador. So I didn't mention that. My, my bad. Um, so John, anytime you want to begin the um, demo, that'd be fantastic. Would it be okay if we asked you questions um, while you're painting? Would that be, would you want them at the front or at the end? What, what's your preference? Well, I, I, I don't mind if I work, then, uh, then I can talk to you. If it's all getting too much, I'll tell it. And uh, but feel free to uh, to ask the questions. It's no problem. So huge comments on the Facebook side. I'm sure on the uh, Zoom side. On the Zoom side, I'm I'm looking for you as um, viewers to go ahead and you know audio. You can actually speak to John. Um, lots of positive, all positive comments about the way that you're using light and the, the beauty of the dark and the lights that you're using. So just wanna let you know that. Okay, okay. Well, shall I start? Please. Yeah, okay. Well, I pre-sketched uh, a few things because I want to keep uh, the story uh, in it. First of all, I will concentrate myself on the sky. I use black tape, as you will see, because it gives uh, a very nice feeling, all black, and I can only concentrate um, about the paper. That's a beautiful well, setup that you have. Oh yeah. I use um, Saunders Waterford paper this time because it's uh, uh, 425 grams. And because I use a lot of water, it's, it's better than Bauer. I use it often as well. But uh, that's the reason why I use this. As the brushes, I use Pintoretto brushes. They are gorgeous. And uh, well, I'll start with uh, pre-wet the sky. That will be my first goal. Are you painting on, on an incline? On an are you painting? On yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, 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 very little. Okay. I use uh, my tape for it. I don't need too much. Okay. I will make some light yellow ochre. Not too much, and a very little scarlet. Keep in mind that this is the reference photo. This is my pre-sketch. I want to work to this goal. Okay. A very soft layer with yellow ochre and a little hint of deep scarlet to take the white of the paper. Okay. Jan, this black line, is it tape? Yeah. Yes, it's a uh, rice paper, black rice paper. It was hard to get, but uh, it worked great. And uh, I work also on a black PVC uh, uh, underground. It uh, does not absorb. If you use uh, wood, then it absorbs. So this works better. 
Is that the, because of the horizon to keep the horizon line? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. And is that black rice paper tape? Yes, it is. It is. It's amazing stuff. I like to use it. Do they call it washi tape? Because I know people call it yeah, washi tape. Exactly. Yeah, that's it. I'm using now some of the amazing lavender we were talking about yesterday. Jan, where, where, where can you buy this tape from? That is a very good question. I did find <laughs> one address in Holland where I could buy it, but people told me that in the United States, it's easy to get in uh, building markets, etc. And that was George. He's with us tonight. Really? really? Yeah. In, in answer to that question, any craft shop should have uh, washi tape. It, it won't be black, but okay. it, they tend to have little patterns on them. But the very lightly sticky bits of tape. Good to hear. If you can find it, send it to me. <laughs> Well, actually, I use this tape because I want to make a clear horizon and a sharp edge to bring later on more light in it. Yeah, can you tell us a little bit about your collection of brushes, please? Sorry? Can you tell us a little bit about your brushes? Yes, I use uh, Tintoretto brushes. They're quite great. And uh, I use um, the thicker uh, brush and the flat brushes, I love them, to make uh, side movements. You'll see this later on. What are you mixing there, Jan? I'm mixing the gray titanium and paint blue gray. Mm. Great, thank you. Paint blue gray, I love it. I had a quick jump over to Amazon, and it says that the brand Scotch, which is a tape brand, carries a washi tape that's black. Is that sound like that's the correct item, or or is that a um, Western knockoff? Maybe, may, maybe. Uh, but this is rice paper. I think it's different from Scotch tape. It's very nice to handle. It, um, the washi tape, it's a Japanese uh, tape that's used in decorative crafts. So if you put washi tape in, in, a, in, a, in a search, you should get loads of different uh, tapes. Actually, I, I posted the link to Amazon. It's a half inch washi tape. It is by Scotch. Thank you. So Jean, are you painting from that image that's above your painting right there? Is that what we're seeing? Is that your reference? Um, that's my reference, actually. But yes, bo bo both are the reference. Okay. This 
This is a photo I made from my sketchbook. This is called my, my book of appetizers. <laughs> uh, just like in a restaurant, when you are getting hungry, you make first an appetizer. So uh, I, this is the reason I call this my book of appetizers. So uh, I, mostly I make these things in one half an hour to, to get an idea of what, what I want after making the monogram. Jan, um, again, yeah. the name of the brand, your brushes, the brand of your brushes, which one is it? Tintoretto. Ah, Tintoretto. It's Italian. Thanks. Oh, I think I have enough drama in the start. This is not good. The most funny things is to lift up Oops, things. to make some more drama. I like to create some sunbeams. Jan, is there a, a size of painting you prefer to do? The size of the painting? Um, I love half sheets, but sometimes I love to take my sketchbook, as I said before, and that's, um, what is it? 20 by 30 centimeters. But most of the time, I prefer half sheets. Okay. And what kind of paper is in the sketchbook? The paper in the sketchbook, that's Saunders Waterford as well. It's a lovely sketchbook. I use it quite frequently when I decide what I want to paint and I take my sketchbook and make the day before I start my original work. Thank you. John, how long does it take you to finish a painting? This is the reason why I use this tape. Okay, so the second part of my uh, demo is preparing the underground for the sea. I'll show you. Here, the result. And again, I will use the same underground as, as above.
except for this part. Carl Jacob is commenting that in Minnesota, they sell rice tape. It's called Nichiban artist tape. At wet paint, wet painter, no, wetpaintart.com. That's good to hear. Jan, uh, I, for doing things like that, I've in the past I've um, I'm not allowed to do it anyway because I'm a sign writer. I ought to be able to do a straight line, but um, I've used a uh, half inch uh, electrical masking tape. Because that, that's made of a, obviously a, a, a plastic. And electric masking tape. Hmm? Where, where can you get an electric masking tape? Uh, any, do, do you have pound shops and, or, or euro shops? Or, they, they sell them in there. Okay. Uh, do you, any DIY shop will have a, a roll of electrical masking tape i honestly i never heard of it <laughs> it's just what you put around you know if you if if you've got a a, a wire in your wall that um that's exposed you just put some tape around it and it kind of electrically seals it but okay. it's it's only very cheap have you tried it on watercolor paper? Yeah, it works. You, it, it, the, the thing is, what you've got to be careful of is not to tape it down too, too, too much. Yeah, because I think it might tear the surface. But that's the case with most paper, uh, uh, glued papers. I mean, you could use um, decorator's tape, but the danger is there. That could also tear the paper. That's why washi tape's probably best one because it's it's really low tack. Yeah. Well, there's another tape you could try too. It's actually a uh, tape that pinstripers use that is yeah. uh, very forgiving and it's also very uh well, they can make it bend and move uh, to have really nice uh, rounded lines and whatnot as well. So well that's that, pinstripers tape. That, that, pinstripers uh, use really nice uh, brushes as well. That, that, that sign writing tape, what you're talking about, is basically the same thing as that electrical masking tape. It's a, it's a vinyl. The light coming through the clouds is breathtaking. Fantastic, Jan. I'm not sure he heard you. <laughs> Well, time to continue. I uh, I dried the underground because I want to keep the the whitest white here because I want to get the sunlight shining on here the, the reflection. So the other parts I did give a, a color yellow yeah. ochre, a little hint of scarlet. Yes. I think uh, George, uh, you didn't hear what George uh, said a while ago. 
Uh, George, if you're still in the room, you may want to repeat your comment. Oh, sure. Uh, but I understand how things get difficult with the hair dryer. So I said that the light behind the, the clouds, the light coming through the, uh, the sky is breathtaking. I love it. Thank you so much, George. Great that you were here. <laughs> we, we were just- I, I could not miss it. Oh, thank, thank you so much. I was just talking with uh, Johnny and Angela about our great time in Thessaloniki. Really great. Yeah. The, the next step is making uh, the water. And uh, I will use for this my flat brushes, my Tintoretto brush. And um, <clears throat> I will mix uh, the paint blue gray with the beautiful lavender. If I don't know more what to do, I always use lavender. I told John yesterday, but <laughs> maybe it's funny, but it's, it's, it's a lovely color for me. I love the blues and the grays. Well, and I will try to make reflections with dry brush strokes. Yeah, and a uh, question about your palette. Do you have more than one palette or is this your main go-to? I only use one uh, palette. That will be enough. Jan, can I ask you a question? Somebody yes, in the chat room uh, says, um, they are sorry they were a bit late, but so they didn't uh, catch the underground pigment. What was the underground pigment? The underground pigment is uh, yellow ochre with a little hint of uh, deep scarlet. Uh huh. Thank you. You see, with the flat brushes, you can make beautiful side movements. It's great when you have some uh, paper with some texture, then you can make the profit of it. Is this paint gray or is it uh, another gray? Paint blue gray. With uh -huh. uh, I mixed it with level level. Huh? try to keep a good move in my work. Jan, did you mix the ochre and the scarlet uh, on the palette or wet and wet on the paper? Uh, on the palette, John, on, on the palette, yes. Jan, do you ever paint from your imagination? Uh, mostly, yes. Uh, now, it, if you see my sketch, I don't do it too precise. Because I, if, if I'm painting a sea, even rather uh, big, big waves or something like, like that, 
then I'm always in, in the wave by myself. So sometimes I paint with my eyes half closed because I want to feel the water just going to the beach. So this is uh, not, I don't feel this is a Mediterranean Sea. But no, the sea it, it, of, of of the Netherlands, no? Yes, of course, yes. yes. <laughs> so if it, you came uh, to the Mediterranean or Thessaloniki or Spain, would you have different scenes? Of course, of course. To totally different, because the feeling is, is different, so... Your paper is rough. Yes, it's uh, cold pressed, and uh, I always so use rough paper. Yeah. So cold press is not exactly rough. It's only a little bit rough, right? It's, uh, this is um, sorry. It's uh, it's me medium. It's not medium. Yes. Rough. Yes. And with the Bauhaus, I use it as well. It's always the uh, the, the medium. Very nice to paint on. Do you mean not? Yes, not exactly. That's that, you, that's the middle ground. Yes, you use it as well. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I I use mainly rough, but I do use not, especially Saunders Waterford. It's a very nice paper. It is. I was quite happy to can get it uh, after the Brexit. <laughs> now, what colors do you have next to the lavender? Next to the lavender, cobalt teal blue. Okay. And what are the other uh, side of it? Furniture, that's mm. King's Blue Light. That's not Daniel Smith. <laughs> that's okay. Mm. You're so what, what was that color again? King's Blue Light and King's Blue Deep. King's Blue Light, okay. This is uh, Joseph's cool, Joseph's warm, uh, oh no, uh, uh, Alvaro's uh, warm, Mayan dark blue, and uh, paint blue gray. So John, Margaret says, I've always wondered how you create your sea, beach, and sky paintings. They're so gorgeous. Thank you. They're very beautiful. Thank you so much. And Pathy comments, you make it look so effortless. It makes me want to immediately sit down and try it. <laughs> Great to be here. Me too. Well, sometimes it's uh, it's it's idiot. Uh, a few weeks ago, I did uh, visit the Maritime Museum and uh, the famous painters in the, in the Netherlands did make things like 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 this. I can't resist it to make this in monochrome because it has such a lovely effect. And uh, well. I'd love to do it. Definitely. If someone feels inspired to do Jan's painting, they can post it in Instagram or Facebook and hashtag uh, Daniel Smith. Oh, yes, of course. People someone, can feel free. I, yeah. I missed it a couple of times. <laughs> if people like I it. Think that I think that's a great idea. <laughs> yes. You can hashtag Daniel Smith, you can hashtag Jan Min. I mean, it will be very nice to see different people's version. 
I did do it many times before, even in Italian groups. And I love to, to see them afterwards. Mm -hmm. I will create more difference. Fran Loureiro sounds like a Portuguese name. Uh, he says, amazing luminosity and depth. Thank you. From Portugal. Yeah. A lovely country. And people who are very keen to listen to the COVID rules. <laughs> very kind people. We have a question about your studio. Do you have a pet, uh, often a cat or any pet that joins you and keeps you company while you're painting? Uh, Do you? My, my company is always music, so this is a rare occasion. I, I, I'm painting without music, but I always listen to music. It can be classic, it can be Beethoven, it can be ABBA, it can be everything. That's... Just like Agus Budianto. Oh, yes, from last guess. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Hi, Jan. This is Stella. Hi, Stella. How are you? Hi. Good to see you, dear friend, and beautiful painting. I love your gentle touch. Thank you so much. So, we actually, we have a reunion of Thessaloniki. Exactly. Yes. <laughs> what a George. great time we had. Hi, George, <laughs> Angel, and everybody. We, yes. We did have, yeah. Johnny is there, George is there. Uh, and I think uh, also Maria is there. I saw her. Really? Yes. That, that, then we can finish with octopus. <laughs> Why not? I will always say yes to a nice octopus. Why not? <laughs> yes. Release the Kraken. Come along. <laughs> George, when is your next biennial? I mean, when can we travel again to Thessaloniki? Well, we'll see about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this year to Bulgaria, girls and boys. Okay, let's meet there. Jo John is just happy. Uh, the judge is just happy that all the paintings are back to the owners. So <laughs> give him a free weekend. Mm. Just seriously at the moment, you're best staying away from Europe at the moment because we're having a bit of a issue. Who has an issue? Uh, Europe and Russia. Ah, yeah. John, do you ever do very large works? And if you do, how do you keep your paintings from drying? Well, John, the biggest size is uh, a full sheet. 56 by 76, that's a, that's a full sheet. Okay. And do you have any issues with your painting drying as you're doing something that large? Do you have any issues with drying, the paint, the painting drying while you're working or? Yes, almost yes. I, I love to, to, to continue on, on dry paper again because uh, it gives some better control. But sometimes I pre wet the paper at the backside, but to, to, tonight not. I that is to... a good solution, right? To keep the paper moist. 
Oh yes, you, you, you can work longer. John, uh, in answer to your question, it, when you're working large and you need to keep it wet, uh, you, just, you just increase the size of, some people use little squirty bottles. Well, best, best thing to do is go and get an industrial size one, like for a garden. And that's what I use when I'm doing big stuff, a great big. A great I've, big squirter. I have very big brushes as well, so that's that's not a problem. But most of the time I use this size of paper. Baum or Saunders, it doesn't matter, but uh, both are excellent. So Baohong is the Chinese paper, isn't it? Yes, it's 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 absolutely great paper. They did make it. Oh, it's this uh, this paper. It's uh, comparable with uh, with uh, other brands, but this is ex exceptional good. But this evening, I like to use some thicker paper. It's not in that thickness. Okay, I'll add some dry brush strokes to give more effect. These are all dry brush strokes. Uh, Anna met Da Natorp. Is she Is Dutch? She? No, I think Danish or I, I ah. think Danish. Because she her comment is beautiful Vadense. Thank you so much. What is Vadense? I don't know exactly. <laughs> uh, but, oh, sorry, Vadense. <laughs> yes, she, she she's very right. The the Vadense is near our Isles, and uh, it's an amazing nature uh, piece of nature. And the, the, the most interesting things is when it's low tide, then you see the most beautiful light reflections. There are a lot of sea dogs there, and uh, it's really an amazing part of Holland. Well, I'll concentrate me now on some rocks. For and and it's Danish. Anne is Danish, you were right. Oh yes, but the Wadden, it's going to uh, near uh, Den Den Denmark, yeah. So Jan, this dark that you're using now, what color is it? Yes, I use now uh, Alvaro's Caliente Grey, a lovely color mixed with a little uh, paint blue gray to make the illusion of rocks or whatever. So for painting, you use this technique of layering, right? First yes. a layer and then drying and then another layer. And so you... Exactly, but not never not more as two layers. Uh -huh. And immediately I take my chance to make some reflections of it. Jan? Yeah? Do, do you, because it's a painting that you're trying to express through your own emotions and do you ever get uh, this far into a painting and then think, Oh, I'd like to put something in it that isn't already fought up in your mind and, and then regret it later. Because whenever I don't have a reference in front of me, I, I put I, I, I go ahead and I put things in there. Uh, I think, oh, I shouldn't have really done that. Okay, yeah. Well, sometimes I'm not, not happy about what, what I did, did make. And then there's always another day. So, I, I don't mind.
Yeah, it's the way it is sometimes, isn't it? It, it can be an hit and miss process. John Carolyn asked, do you paint as much in the winter as, as you do, let's see, do you paint as much in the winter considering the light difference? Uh, oh, to be honest, the light in the winter can be so beautiful. And I love the long shadows and uh, it, it has its, its own charm. I, uh, I can't say when I paint more in summer or winter, there's always a chance to get great light. And, uh, and if there's not light, I, I, I make it. I, Why not? I, I rarely make painting when there, there is no light. It's a different light, but uh, it has a lot of light in your country. Oh, yes. And, uh... We have a question by Sagnik. Uh, yeah. He says, should beginners or students of plein air focus on studying the subject academically, like doing it as it is, or try to bring out a painting with mood and lighting in it, simplifying things? Well, that's a good question. Um, it's not only a matter of technique. Uh, you can have a great te technique that is really necessary. You, you must, can draw anyhow, but it's also important that you paint with your soul. And that these two in combination makes, in my opinion, uh, a good watercolor. So the technique only is, is only technique. You must work your emotions as, as well. And that's how, how it is. I'll concentrate my, my figures because they are... Jan, I have a question. Do you paint outside a full painting and finish it? Or are you mostly sketch outside plain air? Um, mostly sketch, um, most, mostly sketch. I, from, from time to time, I go with my students to, uh, to a beautiful uh, old uh, fishing village or something like that. But most of time, especially when, when, when traveling, I've always in my backpack, a small notebook or small brushes, and I make quick notes and later on, I uh, uh, I finished it. All right, thank you, uh, Jan. Yeah. Uh, are you close enough to the north to be able to see the northern light? No, unfortunately not. Um, oh, well, it's very very rare. Mm. You sometimes it happens, but. A couple of years ago, I was lucky to go to Tromsø. Right. That was amazing, really amazing. I experienced it as I did have used psychedelic, psychedelic drugs. Mm. I was completely <laughs> bad. It's a painting in the sky. Have, have you ever painted a, a, a Northern Lights or Aurora Borealis, as they call it? It is an amazing thing. I did see, I did travel a lot in my life and maybe I did visit 95 countries or something like that but you can't compare it with anything it's just, I can imagine that in the old days people had their stories about it and magical or, or all the fairy tales and yeah. of course it's lovely to make reflections now this is uh, for making the reflection of the man that is staring at, 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 at what, maybe at the child's. Jan, for the scenes that you're doing now, do you prefer opaque mixes? What, what makes it, John? I'm, I'm, uh, Webkey asked, do you prefer more opaque mixes for such scenes like you're doing now? And if so, why? Well, I love 
opaque mixes for the surroundings, but the figures I want to have very full with tonal values. So it's uh, it's 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 a mix. And if you had to choose what you believe is number one, which is always a very hard question, is it for you your soul? or technique, which one is the main driver? If you had to pick one, which one is the driver for you? Oh, that's, that's a, a little question. It, I, I can make a long answer. <laughs> yes. <laughs> make it long. <laughs> uh, let, let, let me say, I, I, I recognize this. When I have day, when I, paint only using technique, then I get stuck. Then it doesn't work. Then I throw it away and uh, well, then I use the backside to make all the sketches, but it's, uh, it's, it's what you can meet. Yes, that, that is true. But I started watercolor uh, 16 years ago because I did everything in oil, oil and oil, old birds, etc. And I went to the academy that nobody could treat me because I was too precise until I did meet in my life Alvaro. And I'm still very, very grateful to him that he was the only one who could show me how you can paint spontaneous. So that was very important for, for me. And after that, I never picked up my old brushes again. So it's an amazing story, but, but it's true. So yeah. he's, he's watching a, a small child that's in the sea. Jan. Yeah. Um, do you ever, in your more detailed paintings, use uh, opaque mediums such as gouache? No, never. No. I only use Chinese white, that, that's no. all. And uh, talking about Chinese white, I am ready to make some other. To uh, paint with emotion and soul, is it good to paint with your eyes half closed or that is for another reason? <laughs> That's for concentration and uh, well, also imagination. What, what is it what I want to make? And uh, um, well, also to, to connect things, all, all must be connected because you, you can't work in an isolation. So that's, uh, that's to see the, the bigger shapes. Okay, then I'll take my white. I want to create some glitter. Yeah, and this is a wonderful painting and I'm so impressed how uh, you know, you didn't use any pencil sketching in this. And Thank you. When you do your ships and boats, do you use a pencil sketch for those? Oh, yes, I can use pencils or uh, ink. And do you erase the uh, pencil if you see it still in the painting or do you leave it? Or if you uh, use a pencil in your painting and it's still visible, do you leave it or do you erase it? Oh, it depends on. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. Not Thank you. I use I use my brush to makes flushes, but it's also 
nice to make some. Jan, Sandra has a question and it's, yeah. is there a reason that you don't use two pots of water, one for washing your brush and one for clean water? Well, sometimes I don't use, uh, I don't change my, my water because sometimes the water can have amazingly nice dirty colors. So I, I always try to do the transparency with my clean water and afterwards, I, 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 this is quite dirt water. So Yang, this uh, white that you used, is it uh, Chinese white yeah. watercolor? Yeah, it's uh, Daniel Smith uh, normal uh, Chinese white. I never use brush or it's only for making uh, some glittering. And now I'm splashing with my brush. Always nice to do. To make the illusion. Actually, making a painting is only illusion. I, actually, it's only mindfuck what we create. We create the illusion that there are things here at the foreground. And always nice to make some very small details. Maybe a bird or more. Maybe this man is dreaming or he's only staring, glancing. All has a story in life. Maybe there's here a little child as well. And maybe. Jan, this is Lorena. You know Lorena Massa? She was in oh. Thessaloniki with us. Of course I know her. Uh -huh. She made a very nice comment. Shall I read it to you? That is very kind. Dear Jan, as you say, during our life, we meet unique people who inspire us and make us uh, grow. One of my teachers made me discover new aspects of uh, painting and I found a new life. I believe that you inspire a lot of people. Congratulations. That's very, very kind. Thank you, Lorena. Uh -huh. Very kind. Hoping to meet you all soon in uh, Bologna. Yes. That would be all great. So Jan, we're at the at the bottom of the hour. Um, yes, yes. Some, some people will be signing off. We're, we're gonna stay on for a little bit longer. When you're done and finished your painting, would you post it to Facebook so everybody can see it? Of course, with pleasure. I'll show it. I'll show it tomorrow. I'll add some more things, but most of the work is 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 done. It's beautiful. I'll show you to here. Thank you. That's lovely. We can see it very well. Yeah. Very, yes. Very well. Yeah. Yes. Beautiful jam. Beautiful jam. Gorgeous. Gorgeous. Okay. Thank you all for watching. Uh, I don't know if there are still any questions. There's a thousand questions. I'm sure oh. we'll have time for more questions. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it was wonderful watching you. And um, I think people really enjoyed your insights as you were painting. I, I'm always amazed that you can paint and also uh, respond to the questions. It's, uh, oh, yeah. you, you guys amaze me. Well, yeah. <laughs> he's very gifted. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. I, I'm always used as a music background. so. My, my audience has been the background to, tonight. I thank you all for watching. Thank you, John, for your opportunity. And uh, 
I'll send you this painting, John, as a reminder. Oh, that, that's super kind of you. I'll that's do it. Kind of you. It's great to have you. Thank you so much. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Jean, Jean thank you so much for giving a beautiful demonstration. Uh, Remember that you can watch it again in YouTube. Yes, you can watch it again in YouTube. And you can see the final, uh, Jan will put the final onto Facebook for us all. So thank you all very, very, very much. Goodbye, thank everybody. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you for being bye. here. Bye.